There's a government crackdown on coaching centers. New guidelines have been issued by the Ministry of Education that say that students under 16 years of age cannot be enrolled into coaching institutes. This comes after the shocking death of a student at a coaching center in Indore where an 18-year-old student collapsed on his desk at a coaching center. Now, coaching centers cannot enroll students below 16 years of age. They cannot make misleading promises. They can't guarantee ranks or good marks. These, these are the new guidelines that the Ministry of Education has issued. The guidelines Lines for regulating coaching institutes have been framed to address the need for a legal framework and also manage in some ways the un unregulated growth of private coaching centers. Now, this comes following complaints received by uh, the government uh, about rising cases of student suicides, fire incidents and even lack of facilities in coaching incidents as well as uh, some of the rigorous teaching methods adopted by them. No coaching center shall also engage tutors who have qualifications less than graduation. Graduation. This is what uh, the guidelines say, and uh, they also insist that uh, the tutors are uh, equipped to handle mental health of students. To discuss uh, the new guidelines, we have uh, Deepak Raheja, who is a psychiatrist, uh, and he also uh, he's the chief psychiatrist and director of uh, Hope Care Hospital. Uh, Mr. Raheja, how do you see these new guidelines? Because in the last few years, we've seen of we've seen not just suicides of uh, students, unfortunately, but also many students suffering from depression, and also you know this competition also has taken a toll on students, and parents have also needed to go for counselling. So, do you see this uh, guidelines, the new guidelines, as uh, you know effective enough? I think I, I think these these gui guidelines are pretty much uh, in place. They were warranted and should have been done much earlier. Uh, I think uh, with the with the uh, surge in suicide and with this latest case of the student collapsing in the in the classroom, just probably is the tip of the iceberg because I think largely uh, in in the last few years the trend had become that these had become commercial factories uh, making promises, playing with emotions of the children and the parents, and and this is not how competitions are cracked or should be prepared for. Uh, so I think I think it's pretty much in place for them to feel that they are going to be accountable in in uh, some ways. The government is is going to monitor. They are going to be need to be sensitized to to to, to perceive mental health issues in children. Uh, they are going to mandatorily, according to these guidelines, have a counselor on board who will who will and they will have to uh, you know uh, notify in their website who the counselor is what the, what time uh, they are going to be available the background check of the teachers you know i mean you can't just uh, fill in a role of, of a teacher just substituting for anything and everything their their qualification um, and if if they they've been involved in any criminal activity all of this will make it uh, very um, surmountable and right uh, Mr. Sharma, uh, we also have Ajay Sharma, who's a student counselor, joining us. Mr. Sharma, tell us about this particular aspect of the guidelines that say that tuition fees for different courses and curriculum that are being charged should be, you know, sort of pre presented on the website, and fair and reasonable receipts should also be made available. So clearly, the government has taken into account the fact that coaching centres have also been overcharging uh, students on many accounts. So, you know, do you think that these guidelines that have been issued uh, will sort of make a difference, and also? the fact that tutors have been specifically asked to undergo some sort of uh, training in handling adolescents. <clears throat> well, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, it all starts with regulations, but the reality is, uh, you know, I would say lies the, the deep root, as you call it. How are we going to change? What is the reason behind these coaching centers? The regulations are welcome. But we need to sanitize parents, in my opinion, because the competition for this, all these IITs and uh, medical uh, institutions is so tough, so difficult, uh, uh, that, 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 that from the time they are young, uh, the kids, that's why they are sent to coaching centers. Government can bring in regulation, but... Uh, I would put it this way that more time, effort and energy should be spent towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, educating the parents on uh, the need not to make uh, admissions to this, these elite universities and colleges 
uh, because of peer group pressure or community pressure, a, a life and death uh, case uh, for the family or otherwise right. uh, the career of uh, students. Secondly, uh, I would put it this way that uh, uh, the kids themselves, because the the really speaking the relevance in view of the overall there's a landscape uh, the for the courses is changing right. because of all this artificial technology and all that right so i think uh, uh, overall uh, the the regulation is welcome but core area is parental education that yes. please leave the kids alone so educating and parents is i think more important but let me also ask a representative from a coaching academy we have uh, rishi dev director of the nba coaching uh, uh, mr dev how do you see this particular uh, suggestion by the center that coaching centers could be penalized up to rupees 1 lakh or the registration even be cancelled for charging you know fees that is exorbitant or being responsible for causing undue stress that leads to you know student suicides and is this the first time that the center is looking at some very serious uh, uh, you know framework but it has also put a lot of onus on state government so clearly there is going to be a lot of uh, uh, you know monitoring of coaching centers from now thank you for uh, having me on the show and uh, i strongly believe uh, we need to uh, look into the matter from both the aspects right the center is looking from one aspect we really look into the fact through one more angle that uh, uh, what exactly is the what is the need of the coaching centers and uh, just pushing the rules and regulations on this aspect i don't think that will be this will be the right thing right. we really need to look into the other aspect uh, like every child is not good enough to uh, you know prepare for these exams on their own Right. So there is a need of the coaching center. We cannot deny this fact. Right. At But the same time, putting a, a rule and uh, putting maybe a, you know kind of slab for the yes. fee that is okay. That is that is definitely a welcome idea. That that can be uh, suggested through the center or through the state. That yes, for this particular course, the fee slab should be between this range. Right. Okay. They can suggest us a range, a minimum and a maximum. So, Mr. Rahija, you know, it, it, there seems to be an attempt to give teeth to policy because every time uh, legislation or guidelines come out, people say that uh, this 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 will not be effective because you know the suicides will continue because after all uh, there is nobody who is accountable. But clearly, there is some attempt to give some teeth to the policy to the guidelines. But tell me one thing: this age limit, you know, 16 years is is sort of uh, being set uh, as uh, the limit for you know even uh, for the entry of students that. do you think is going to be a barrier for uh, many students it's it's a good thing that you know there is an acknowledgement that students have all to be us, at a certain age uh, mr rahija all of us are surrounded all of yes. us are surrounded by children in our family and i strongly feel that uh, putting this barrier is again a wrong thing yes. reason being Let I've me let me ask the psychiatrist this question, sir, because you know we see ten-year-olds taking up J uh, coaching and UPSC coaching. Mr. Rahija, what do you think, sir? I most humbly want to reach out to my co-panelists and uh, implore upon the understanding of a death. This is the child in the family who dies, who born to a coaching center to become something in in life, and the parents get to learn that he is no more. Sixteen, I feel, is a is a is an age that's been well mind put into because of a certain level of maturity that children are expected to have once they leave home because most of these coaching centers uh, expect you to either live in uh, residences around them and there is mushrooming um, there is there is then the concept of dummy school that is right. you know propagated and you not really allowed expected to go to a school and the attendance is taken care of and the child at a very nascent age of 14 or 15 is left alone to right. deal with the kind of pressures where he every day realizes that the probability that he will make it is much less than the probability that he and there is no counseling no support available to him so i mean uh, of course uh, the the coaching centers are important stakeholders and and to right. for these guidelines to be effective they need to be a part of it but there need to be some benchmark that that will look into and understand that what is pushing these students to collapse what is this pushing uh, pushing these students to push themselves beyond the point where they can't deal with it 
and and have a mental decompensation enough for them to contemplate suicide so right. the, the so clearly a lot more needs to be done when it comes to the well being of our students the guidelines might just well be the start thank you mr raheja and also thank you mr sharma and thank you mr dev for joining us on this uh, broadcast